rock stars take an awful lot for granted, but they might not be stars if they were invisible. And putting the musician in focus is what rock photography is all about. To a great extent, it's the cameramen and women who are responsible for the star's identity. And for millions of fans, the picture would be incomplete if it wasn't for those images that in many cases define the music. One photographer who documented some of those images was Lisa Laws. We asked her what makes a good photograph. You can get emotional when you see a picture, you know? If, uh, if something makes you laugh or cry or uh, feel something, then, that, then that's a good photograph. You know? And that's what I like to do. I like to make you feel something when you look at my photograph. Laws reminisced about one of her more memorable subjects, Janis Joplin. And once she came to New Mexico, and this was at the, at the very end, just before she died, and she, she, she got off the airplane, she was at the La Fonda in Taos, and she said, Lisa, you can help me, help me. And I said, oh boy, I can finally get to help Janice, what can I do? And, uh, and she says, I'm tired of these city men, I want me a mountain man. So uh, I found her a nice mountain man. Another photographer who got his start in the 60s was Baron Woolman. When Rolling Stone magazine first began back in 1967, he was their frontline cameraman, documenting the sweat and glory of a movement that suddenly turned into a culture. Nobody was dealing with music in those early years, 67, 68, 69, and so we had to feel entirely to ourselves, you know. The musicians, after a few months, you know, they'd say, Rolling what? Well, are you in the Rolling Stones? You know, but after they realized who we were, we were welcomed everywhere, you know, and it was, it was wonderful in those early years, and it was great. Every two weeks we'd put out this magazine and go downstairs below our offices was the printing press, and we'd go down there and watch the thing come off the printing press, you know, and drink champagne. Those days are over, and now Woolman is an aerial photographer. As soon as I got up in the plane and started flying around on my own, I, I realized not only was it fun, but it looked real good down there on the ground. And since I was a photographer, I figured, well, it's a good way to mix the things I love to do, taking pictures and flying around. The wonderful thing about aerial photography is, is uh, it's symbolically uh, it takes you symbolically above all your problems, and it takes you, in fact, above all your problems. Picture taking certainly isn't for everyone. For some, the satisfaction comes from collecting rather than printing. Such an individual is Graham Nash, who happens to be on the board of trustees for the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. We asked Nash about his extensive collection, I think that uh, I chose wisely because of the basic fact that I chose pu purely for myself. And uh, the exhibit at UCLA uh, is proving that out to a certain extent. And we're having tremendous reaction from people about uh, waking people up and making them see it a little differently. And so I, I began to collect images that I could put in front of you and you would go, I don't even want to look at that. I mean, why did you show me that? You know, oh boy, that is incredibly beautiful. I could look at that for hours. Whether you're collecting pictures or shooting them, it's the captured moment that counts. And in rock and roll, that moment has to look as sharp as possible.
looking good for beauty, we will pay.